well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Welcome to another edition of Bearing Arms, Cam and Company. My name is Cam Edwards. I am glad you've joined us on the program today. Coming up here in a matter of moments, we're going to talk with Mr. Pete Brownell, who is the uh, co-chairman of Second Adventure Group, also the owner of AR15.com, which has been uh, in the headlines over the last couple of days. Depending on your news sites, you won't find this story in the Washington Post, New York Times, Chicago Tribune. Uh, But uh, on the right, uh, some have noticed What's been going on with AR15.com? GoDaddy, which uh, is the registrar of the uh, AR15.com domain name, suddenly uh, told uh, the uh, website that it would no longer uh, be the site's registrar and uh, has thrown uh, some, some, you know, wrenches uh, into the works there at uh, AR15.com. So Pete Brownell, who is the owner of AR15.com, sat down with us today, gave us an update about what actually happened earlier this week, uh, what the site is doing now, uh, and what his concerns are uh, about the future of the big tech crackdown on speech uh, and platforms that they don't like. Take a look and a listen. Pete Brownell is with us on the program. Pete, thank you so much for your time today, sir. Absolutely, Cam. Glad to be here. All right, so what is going on with uh, AR15.com and GoDaddy? There's been all kinds of reports, but uh, you are the owner of AR15.com, so we get it straight from the horse's mouth now. What's happening with right. the website? Well, we had uh, we got caught up in GoDaddy's uh, targeted uh, wiping off of anybody that was what we look at as targeted approach on, on deplatforming, which from a registrar's perspective means we're still being hosted. So the servers are still not moving. They're still there. But the one that helps point traffic to those servers is that registrar. And that was GoDaddy. And GoDaddy said, well, we're no longer going to, um, you're now removed from our, uh, from our business. We, we don't want you anymore. And they kicked us to the curb. And that happened Monday. Uh, it actually happened right in the middle of a call that we were having with Juan. Who, uh, who runs, who's the traditional owner and now a great partner with us mm-hmm. on uh, Arcom. Juan was saying, hey, uh, I'm hearing these words out there uh, from GoDaddy about um, Parler. We're with GoDaddy. We better, we better have our ducks in a row just in case. And, and uh, when, when he said that, they basically called and said, you're out. Right in the middle of our phone call. So. Yeah, and it was it was one of those things where they there was no there's they said you're done we're not going to accept any kind of recourse we're not going to give you any time to clean up anything really so uh, it was just a uh, I think they just made a reactionary call and we were impacted by it so so how have you all dealt with this we we got a new registrar okay and. And we moved uh, registrar that day, and it takes a while for the internet to catch up to that type of move. A little mm-hmm. bit different than a. Oh, that's uh, when you move servers. When you change the registrars, it's a real quick turnaround time for the for the internet to to catch up. When you move serving servers, it takes a long longer time. So we're still got a server uh, group that's helping out and doing a good job there, uh, but GoDaddy, they. They turned us off, and we moved quite quickly after that. We had to. We do have a backup. So AR15backup.com is the site right now. Okay. But 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 as you say, with the uh, the new registrar, uh, AR15.com should connect folks to the, uh, to the website, uh, if not now, in the very, very near future. In the very near future, correct. Right. And so we're expecting everybody across the Internet by Friday morning should be – it should be back to normal. Okay, that is very good news. Um, you know, so, so did GoDaddy say anything specifically about why they were doing this, or was this just you know uh, we we've got cold feet associated with uh, uh, you know uh, uh, a platform that allows gun owners to uh, uh, exercise their First Amendment rights? We don't want to be a part of that anymore. 
<laughs> well, they, I'm not sure they'll say it that specifically, <laughs> but it's it's the uh, promoting and encouraging violence is the the notice that was in the notice. Very very similar word, very genetic generic. Uh, well, you're in violation of our policy, and here's exactly in the policy where you're in violation, you're gone. Promoting and encouraging violence. Same words they use with parlor. Um, and, and frankly, when you get a, you get, there was such a surge in comments around what was happening in DC. Mm -hmm. And when you are, when you're moderating a site, your our policy at AR 15 is that we, we do not promote illegal activity on the site period. And, and we delete comments and threads when we see them that would commentate that kind of violence that was that was proliferating on all social networks. We weren't given the latitude to clean it up. It was such a, an explosion of of concern uh, about what was going on, and some of the posters just got out of hand. And as we try to um, get them back in line and say that doesn't follow our policy of you, you can't say that, um, it was it was such a volume we couldn't keep up with it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and as you say, I mean, look, we saw this, we saw those types of comments on virtually every platform, uh, on Twitter, on Facebook, uh, Parler, Gab, whatever. Um, but, but but only certain platforms were targeted as a response. But, but yet, right, but yet it was not a universal um, play uh, or rule that was being made by GoDaddy. It was very targeted um, by GoDaddy. Now, we may find out that they were working with all the other platforms and maybe a little more grace period. Maybe they were a little larger and had a different account manager there. I want to give them a little benefit of the doubt, but mm -hmm. it sure doesn't feel that way. I mean, when Parler is millions of users and they get deplatformed you know, by many, uh, and we get rolled into that kind of same, same effort, it's hard, it's hard to say it wasn't specific. Are you concerned? Are, are you concerned about, uh, you know, because Parler not only uh, was taken, you know, off of app stores, but uh, Amazon cloud services actually removed Parler from from their servers. Um, I, you know, feel free to get as generic or specific as you want. But uh, are, are you concerned about uh, something similar happening to the servers that host uh, yeah. AR15.com? We are. Uh, you have to. Yeah, we're we're checking up with every one of our partners out there that continue to allow AR-15 to thrive and be alive, and just to make sure that are, are, are we we still good or there's no violations you're seeing because that proves that we're trying our best to um, stay within parameters that they approve. Now, the, our policies haven't changed the way we do our policies and the way we. We make sure people are, um, you know, not holding pictures of bloody heads. That doesn't fly. That type of stuff mm -hmm. uh, that encourages that kind of uh, mayhem. Uh, we're we're checking to make sure that the hosting companies aren't going to change their rules or have a different interpretation of their rules midstream. So we get all this backlog of your guys are good from our hosting companies and if they change that that ruling we'll have to ask for some something very specific why were we good at 10 o'clock and now we're not good at, at noon yeah yeah i mean that's you know that, that there, there's a lot of disturbing things about uh, what we're seeing here with the other uh, tech crackdown but you know the fact that uh that basically you were not given the opportunity to address no uh the concerns of GoDaddy was just okay you guys are done um, there was, and there was no, there was no time to address yeah. and there was no recourse to challenge that with, with facts. It was just, you're done. I washed their hands and said, um, they didn't even say goodbye. They said, you're done. Uh, let me, let me ask you, I mean, what do you think, what do you think the reaction is? I mean, to me, this seems like a really bad move and I'm looking at a piece, even Megan McArdle, who is not a conservative by any stretch of the imagination, uh, has a piece of the Washington Post today. We should be frightened by tech companies censoring of conservatives. And she's writing, obviously, to a liberal audience. I mean, she's not writing to a conservative audience. But she says those who oppose Trump should also be cautious about these alliances between big government and big tech. Uh, she said the other day I heard from a never Trump friend, a Biden voter, who's convinced that eventually 
After we all get comfortable with what big tech has done, it will come for conservatives like him. If that happens, he and others like him are not going to ally with their censors, public or private. It seems to me like this is I, I, I understand why these companies are doing this. I don't agree with it. I understand their viewpoint. I just think it's the wrong thing to do. Cam, I think you've, you've struck on something here. When policy is made during a time like this and, re, and companies react like this, it, it's, uh, there's repercussions. And the repercussions are they've just silenced, they've silenced and violated uh, a voice that represents half of America. Not, not AR-15, but not necessarily parlor but they sent a signal that that we're targeting a, a, a group and we don't want their voice on our platform. Now, you could argue, well, they're a private company. They can do what they want. But you can't have this this other protection that the government gives you in that case. You become a publisher mm-hmm. in that case. When you start doing the things you're doing, you can't have it both ways. So we're all law-abiding citizens if, if, and we follow the rules for the most part. If the company says you're violating our rules, uh, okay, we'll move. Don't like it. Um, but then you can't be afforded other protections, 230 to be exact. Mm-hmm. And when they come at you at force to silence a voice in unison, there's other things that these organizations that are doing it better be, better be prepared, prepared to defend, which is, uh, you know, when they de- deplatform Parler, there's an argument, and I'm sure it's going to be made by Parler, that um, these companies are taking out a competitor. Now, that's going, to, that's going to be tough because if they don't uniformly apply these types of rules to everybody, mm-hmm. which for years, Cam, you know this, firearms industry, uh, uh, other industries that are not in favor with the coast, the few at the coast who are making these rules and applying these policies, when, when they don't apply them equally, you get managed by the few, and you only hear one voice out there, and that's the scary part. It is the scary part, and you know, look, if 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 these organizations are concerned about uh, conspiracy theories or, uh, you know, uh, threats of violence, you don't, you can't just simply kind of push it off to the shadows and think that you're dealing with the issue, right? I mean, that that's that's the actually that makes it worse. Uh, you have to be able to con- you have to be able to bring this into the sunlight and confront these things. You have to be able to talk about these issues because, uh, again, quoting Megan McArdle uh, from the Washington Post, she says, uh, "I think I still think Twitter was right to block Trump, who cannot be allowed to whip up further insurrection from the Oval Office. But in its shock, will Blue America resist the urge to overreach, or will it try to confine Trump's voters with him?" Eventually, 74 million people are likely to crash through any boundary that their opponents can throw up. And when they do, other terrible things may be set free, even if we can't yet see exactly what. Um, Again, you know, she's writing for a liberal audience, and I hope that they're listening. uh, Because I know that they think that they're, you know, clad in the armor of righteousness right now. uh, But they are they are they are making there are a lot of mistakes being made in Washington, D.C. on both sides of the aisle, in my opinion. But this is a big one. Uh, being made uh, by by tech industries, I think aided and abetted by Democrats who are, you know, out to uh, silence, not just uh, the president, uh, but as Megan McCardle says, you know, every single American might have voted for him. And frankly, I know that there are some folks on AR15.com who didn't vote for Donald Trump. They, you know, right. they're, they're not Trump supporters. But when you're right. silencing that one point of view, thinking that that's going to make everything better, it doesn't. It makes people angrier. It makes people well. feel more persecuted. Uh, and it, it, you know, it gives them, it adds to the grievances that they already have. Well, you're, Cam, you've hit something. I think Megan's hitting on something. It's validating the tinfoil hat theory. And, and, uh, so it's no longer, it's no longer a fringe idea because you get, if it's just happening to one group on, on the way that they think there may be some, these, these, these things that were said on parlor probably, uh, violated even parlor's rules. They couldn't keep up with it. I know that's the case with us. Uh, but when it's, it's a totalitarian approach uh, and only happens to one group and you see this other stuff still out there, you go, you start to go, wow, wait a second, this is not good. 
it's not it's not what America's about. This is freedom of speech is uh, is fighting for the speech that you disagree with the most. That's what freedom of speech is. That's what, and that's what you're fighting for. Uh, and I'd like to see more groups step up and say, wait a second, uh, on both sides, let's let's not listen to the the the, the real um, tale of this on both sides trying to demand something that the center does. Let's listen to what reasonable policies are. And we've, we, I think we've crossed the line as America with this. We've allowed these big corporations to do this. They may be too big uh, as they move forward. That's always been the challenge is the challenge whether they have monopoly on communication. And I think this starts to prove the case that they do. I do appreciate uh, Pete being with us on the program today. And, uh, you know, as I said a couple minutes ago, I, I agree. These calls for violence um, they have no place right now uh, on these platforms. But the double standard that's being applied and has been applied for months on these platforms needs to be recognized and needs to be called out because a double standard makes things worse. Look, it's one thing if there's a, a rule that we all consider to be uh, too restrictive, right? It's another thing when there are just simply two sets of rules and there's one set of rule that allows one side to do almost whatever it wants and the other side finds itself increasingly confined to uh, the the narrowest of thoughts that can be expressed before all of a sudden <laughs> the complete shutdown happens. I'm not excusing calls for violence. I'm not uh, condoning those calls for violence, but I am saying that they're happening on the left and on the right and it's not just parlor. And you're not just seeing posts at arf.com. You're seeing this on Twitter. You're seeing this on Facebook. A lot of times, the individuals who are posting these threats from the left are not even suspended. There are no, there are no penalties coming from those platforms themselves, much less from the tech companies that serve those platforms to say, hey, Twitter, clean up your act. Or we're going to shut you down. Again, it's a double standard. And you cannot rule a country with two sets of rules. Doesn't happen. All right, let's get to our uh, armed citizen story, our recidivist report, our good deed of the day. We'll start with our uh, recidivist report out of a Texarkana, where a uh, suspect has been identified in a uh, weekend shooting in Texarkana, Texas. A 20-year-old Marquise Jawan Thompson should be considered armed and dangerous, according to police, uh, after this uh, shooting at a Whataburger in uh, Texarkana. 29-year-old Nicholas Muldrow of Hope, Arkansas, was killed. This uh, happened Tuesday morning. Shooting happened in the parking lot of the Oakland Village Shopping Center. Authorities say Muldrow got into a car, uh, drove to the parking lot of that Whataburger, where he ran into some trees after he was shot. Uh, police also say that they've been looking for Marquez Thompson, for quite some time, uh, for having shot a man twice within a few days of each other. At that time, Thompson also had felony warrants out for probation violation on an aggravated assault conviction from 2017, as well as a uh, warrant out for stalking and intimidation. So the uh, 20-year-old, well-known to law enforcement, already convicted of violent crimes as a teenager, and yet apparently, little to no time behind bars for those violent offenses. Uh, on to today's Armed Citizen story. These three gentlemen, well, I don't know they're gentlemen. These three guys arrested in uh, Canton, Missouri, Lewis County, Missouri, after a property owner held two of them at gunpoint until deputies arrived. This was uh, several days ago uh, in uh, rural Lewis County. When deputies arrived, Colton Sturm and uh, Dwight Woodbury were being held at gunpoint by the property owner. Uh, according to a uh, sheriff's office, a third suspect, Christopher Batley, found hiding on the property. Deputies say that Batley was found in possession of a handgun and actually assaulted deputies while he was being arrested. The sheriff's office stated that the uh, landowner's security camera captured several suspects on his property. When he got there, two of those subjects, uh, identified again as Colton Sturm and Dwight Woodbury, were being held at gunpoint by uh, the landowner. So right now, Christopher Batley... 32 years of age of uh, Cahoka, Missouri, charged with one count of burglary uh, in the first degree, one count of armed criminal action, one count of assault. 
Thirty-year-old Colton Sturm charged with one kind of burglary as well as a, a, a third third-degree burglary as well. And thirty-year-old Dwight Woodbury of uh, Keokuk, Iowa, also facing uh, burglary charges as well. Uh, the homeowner or the property owner, rather, not facing any charges for uh, holding those suspects until officers arrived. And uh, finally, today our good deed of the day from New Smyrna Beach, Florida, where a police officer able to save the life of a man who was threatening to jump off of a hotel balcony. It was last Thursday when Officer Tim Hyde got that call. He says he's no hero, but he says he is glad to help. It was Thursday night when the call came in, despondent man threatening to jump off of a fifth floor hotel balcony. Hyde, by the way, has only been with the New Smyrna Police Department since August of last year. So just a few months, but he does have prior law enforcement experience. And he said that um, what he was facing called for a quick but calm response. He said, just telling me he can't do it anymore. He doesn't want to do this anymore. He just wants to kill himself. And I know that there are so many Americans out there who are feeling that way because of the events of the last year, because of the uh, economic stresses because of the social isolation, because of the uncertainty surrounding our, our civil society, uh, as, as well as all of the individual personal issues that so many of us are going through. I feel for that guy. I'm glad that Tim Hyde was there to help him. He said he engaged the man, talking like a friend rather than a police officer, as he uh, tried to divert his attention long enough to get close to the man. And then he pulled him back over the railing with the help of a hotel security guard. WESH-TV says the uh, weeping man fell into the officer's arms. And the stress of the situation for both became clear. Tim Hyde says, I just like having the opportunity to help somebody. It worked out good that day. Thank God. Well, thank God. But also thank Tim Hyde there in New Smyrna Beach, Florida. I hope that gentleman gets the help that he needs. And, uh... Officer Hyde, in the right place, at the right time, willing and able to do the right thing. We thank you very much for your very good deed. That is all the time we've got for you on this edition of Bearing Arms Cam and Company, but I want to thank you for being a part of the program. As always, don't forget you can subscribe to Town Hall Media on YouTube. That way you'll never miss a program. Also, Bearing Arms Cam and Company on Rumble. Yes, we're posting the uh, show there every day as well. Uh, if you want the podcast, Amazon, Apple, for now spotify soundcloud stitcher you can find us there thank you again for being a part of the program we'll see you back here tomorrow with more of the latest second amendment news and information don't forget to check out bearingarms.com in the meantime for even more coverage of uh, news dealing with your right to keep and bear arms and until we talk again be well be safe and be free